Hey fam, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. If you're seeing me for the first time, hi, hello. My name is Sotwani Kelechim was the aka Soti Baby Soti Mama, Soti Special, Soti Sprinkle, Soti Everything Nice, Soti the Law. And yeah, I'm a mom of two, a wife, a lawyer, and all of that good stuff. And on this channel, we film about the law, we talk about interesting, gripping, soul searching topics, we film about interesting things, and we learn. The most important thing is that we learn. Every time you come to my channel, you should learn something good or something new anyway okay let's get into the video of today if you're interested in the kind of content that I film if you like my face like my outfit and you think I'm looking nice today don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up okay subscribe to this channel it's the red bar here send to all your friends watch till the end please watch till the end I actually have interesting content I don't know why you guys are not watching please watch till the end and yeah give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment in the comment section okay all right let's get into the video guys <laughs> So, you guys, huh, this topic, today's video is gonna, it's, it's heartbreaking, okay? But um, I feel like it's important that we discuss this, we talk about this topic because I have talked about this several times and I think it's one of these topics that call to me, speak to me because, you know, everybody has a calling. There's something that everybody needs to talk about, everybody's interested in. This particular issue, I never experienced it until I became a mom. I started hiring domestic staff. And yes, we're talking about domestic staff. In the incident that happened, terrifying incident, a woman, a professor actually, University of Mena, I believe, um, a microbiology professor, Dr. Fumilayo, um, she had a help before. I don't know. I think she's a widow. Yes, yeah, she was a widow at the time. I don't know about her kids, but she was a widow and she had a staff beforehand, but that staff had to leave. And so she employed somebody else and employed a 14 year old girl who um, was supposed to stay with her. But in the process of living with her for some time, the girl kept getting into a series of like unfortunate events, incidents of stealing, of thefts, and or theft rather, and a lot of other things. So she was, um, you know, let go. The woman said to let her go, like instead of dealing with it, because a lot of us, <laughs> Yeah, we deal with a lot of things, we endure, endure, endure. But this woman is like, I mean, you go, I'll find somebody else and all of that good stuff. So the girl, excuse me, so the girl left and unbeknownst to the woman, the girl was begrudged, I forget her name, I think it was Joy, but begrudged and got a, a few of her other classmates, I think this girl was in SS1 or so, um, got a few of her classmates to come and those guys um, stole from the woman, they beat her up and they butchered her, okay? Point back period, she was killed by this girl and a few of her friends. And that is how we found out the story of a woman who had reached the pinnacle of her career, was doing so well for herself, had a good life, okay, and just employed somebody that caused that life short. And I thought it's important that we discuss this topic of domestic staff. Now, before I continue, if you're not Nigerian, you'll probably be wondering why these kinds of things come up a lot of the time, right? Because our culture is one of cheap labor. Let's be frank, cheap and easy labor. So a lot of people um, are not able to continue their, a lot of people are not able to continue their education because of poverty, because of the state of the country, economic finance, and because of the fact that a lot of people have a lot of children. So some people have seven, eight, nine kids, and the parents cannot afford to send all of them to school. So what is the alternative, right? They get um, families to adopt or to hire their children in exchange for payment, which they will later save up to go to school, or in exchange for training, okay? Some even go directly to school from the house where they are employed in. So some people get payments, some people get actual education, and others learn a trade or a skill or something like that. That is the informal um, arrangement that we have in Nigeria. Now, I've discussed my experience before, but because I've deleted a lot of my videos, you may not see that if you scroll down. But let me just give you a glimpse of what I've gone through in the past five years. I've had nothing less than maybe nine or ten people coming into my home, not work for me for that period, but I've employed, I've interviewed, I've discussed with different types of people. And let me tell you the truth is that it's a problem we are facing. Okay, this industry, it is an industry, let's not, let, believe it or not, it's an industry. We need to regulate it in some kind of way. So what is the process? Like I was saying, if you're not Nigerian, you won't understand. In Nigeria, Nigerians living in Nigeria, 
a lot of people employ domestic staff, like I said. But the process is actually kind of crazy if you think about it. A man who claims to be an agent or a woman who claims to be an agent that you get the number from God knows where, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, bring somebody to you that, oh, I went to the village, I found this girl, she wants to work, and then you go ahead and probably do like an interview, informal interview, but what can you really check? This person is from the village. A lot of the time, they can't even write. Some can write, some can read. Some have gotten secondary education, some have not even gone to school. I had one that had never even smelt primary school at nothing okay she was so good she was good with braiding she had good skills but she could barely understand what i was saying mm. that's another story for another day she nearly killed us so that particular girl did not know the when she turned on the gas and the gas was on the entire night you guys it was on the entire night it was my husband that woke up first thank god that he woke up first before any of us okay and he smelt it immediately. He screamed. He said, "Nobody come out of your room. Nobody touch any socket. Nobody touch anything." He opened all the windows, opened everywhere, all the doors, everything, so that the smell. We were in the room for like an hour before we could come out. You guys, imagine what would have happened if she woke up first or any other person just switched on the light and boom, would have taken the whole entire apartment. Something that was on the whole night. Okay, but that I digress. Okay, so what happens is that these people come into your home. Then you do an interview, informal interview, and then you go ahead to do like a medical checkup because a lot of the time they're coming from the village and there are lots of things in the village, diseases that they have not taken immunization for because some of these people, access to healthcare is zero to none. And so you go and conduct a series of tests. In my experience, I've had somebody that was pregnant. I've had somebody that was um, had hepatitis. I've never had HIV, but I know could have had HIV. I've had someone that had recently had tuberculosis. And if I had not done that, those tests, these some of these illnesses, some of these diseases are communicable. Okay, they are contagious. You can transfer, it, especially to children. So you spend a small amount of money, but it might not be small for everybody because you want to do a comprehensive test in a proper institution. Okay, to get everything complete and get it accurate, you're spending nothing less than fifteen, twenty thousand. Imagine you do that, and the person stays one week and says they are not staying anymore and they are going. And that's another issue. They come into your home, <laughs> they go, they stay a while, and they realize that, okay, I'm not cut out to take care of children. I don't like this family. They come up with all sorts of excuses and series of things. Some of them stay a year, stay a few months. They gather enough money to go and do what they actually wanted to do. Because for a lot of people, they don't want to be nannies. They are, it's like a means to an end, which is why a lot of them misbehave. Because really, they don't want to be here. They're just trying to get money to go and do what they actually want to do. Hmm. So, in my experience, <laughs> I've dealt with different types of people. People who would neglect my children, some would bully my children. Right now, we had to put cameras in our house. I wasn't really a camera person because, I mean, before now, I was a bit flexible because I was still doing um, nursing mom hours. I was still, you know, up and down. Now that I'm more at work, my husband is busy. We are both busy. We absolutely had to install cameras in the house because my kid would come and say, oh, this person slapped me. The girl would be lying. This one will be denying so it's my kids word against theirs i mean no kids can be naughty but at the same time if your kid is telling you that somebody is consistently slapping you you have to be sure okay so things like that bullying kids not doing their chores watching tv all the time one was even recording my kids i talked about recording my kids in the bathroom how did i even find the video one particular day she didn't sleep i woke up at 3 a.m to drink water and i found that um, she was on her phone. I'm like, yo, this is why you don't wake up early. You're always tired in the morning. You oversleep in the morning because you don't go to bed on time. What are you doing on your phone? I take the phone from her and lo and behold, she's texting. I found out different men on Facebook saying things and all of that. And I couldn't believe that a young child was saying this. So I went through the phone. I even decided because of the kind of messages I saw on Facebook and what she was chatting with the person or the people actually, the lewd messages ended up going to her pictures because I'm like this kind of person will probably be sending nudes because that's what she was talking about only to see naked picture of my children and videos not just pictures videos in the bathtub when they were doing bubble bath and things like that and I went livid okay I went crazy so what am I trying to say with her telling you this you guys this thing okay a lot of people say that oh um I remember when I posted those videos people were like oh stay home take care of your family take care of your kids Nigeria 
it's not like that okay i would i would if i could but a lot of the times where the economy is one income household uh, is not easy okay not even just the income the respect the fact that they are going out and coming in this deeds sanity and all of that there's a lot of things that are involved in doing this if I absolutely had to, I would quit my job and take care of my family. That's the truth, you know. But I'm talking about, you know, the fact that it's one person doing all of this. It's not easy. And two, this is our culture. This is who we are, okay? People need help. You need support so you don't lose it. You don't go crazy. And so this woman who employed help, I don't blame her for doing that. And another, and I, I, I don't blame her for doing that. I even support that an older woman who didn't have anybody with her wanting to, you know, take care of a child per se, and you know, in exchange for her education, she would do domestic chores for her. A lot of people say that children should not be employed as staff because it's child labor and all of that. I agree to an extent because what would a 14 year old girl be able to do for me? 14 year old girl is like in her teens and is like that's the prime when all these things going to to start. So imagine that person being responsible for, um, for children, responsible for cleaning and a lot of this and cooking and all that. I don't support overworking kids but I, at the same time I know that abroad, kids start selling lemonades, they start babysitting, they start doing different chores for money. So why is it so different here? The difference is that here we work people. When you say, okay, I'm playing somebody, they will sweep, they will clean, they will wash, they will cook, they will do all of those things. And that's why I think that people are averse to hiring children. Me, I cannot manage, I'm a child, I'm a baby. I can't manage a child. But what does the law even say? Let's actually check. I know we've talked about this, like how... Um, hiring younger people people under the age of 18 is wrong and i know the child rights act states that the age of a child is 18 and below or below 18 so let's actually look at what the law says i just looked this up now and section 18 of the child rights act remember that every state has its own um what do they call it every state has its own domestication of a federal act so if the you see how do i how do i explain it in layman's terms i think i've talked about this before so when you see a law saying something something act it means that it's in the fct it applies in the fct but when it now becomes law when you see something something law like child's right law is always attached to a state because every act that is passed in the national assembly must be domesticated by individual states to apply to that state because when you're charging somebody for an offense, it must be charged in the state, the locus where it applied, where the thing happened. Okay, because you see the charge, oh, so so and so so so, in the so 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 judicial division in the, the, the states are this and this, or honor before this, this date, this, this happened. Because to, for a charge to be effective and not defective, it must state the location and it must under, be under the jurisdiction of that court where the person is being charged to or charged in. English, come see, come sir. So yes, this is the Child's Rights Act. But I don't know if um, Ninja State, I think it's MENA where this thing happened, if they have domesticated the Child's Rights Act. If they've not, then this may not apply. But generally speaking, I think about 24 or 25 states in Nigeria have domesticated that act. A lot of the core north, northern states have not because of the whole issue of Islam and the age of marriage and early marriage and child marriage and things like that. Anyway, <clears throat> the Act says, Section 28 of the Child Rights Act, Prohibition of Exploitative Labor. It says that, subject to this Act, no child shall be subjected to any forced or exploitative labor or employed to work in any capacity except where he is employed by a member of his family on light work of an agriculture, horticultural, or domestic character or required in any case to lift, carry, or move anything so heavy as to be likely to adversely affect his physical, mental, spiritual, or moral, or social development, or employed as a domestic help outside his own home or family or environment. Hmm. Okay, so this domestic help issue has been addressed actually in law. No child shall be employed or work in an industrial undertaking and nothing in this subsection shall apply to work done by children in technical schools or similar approved institutions the supervised work by the authority so schooling and all of that does not apply 
Any person who contravenes any provision of this subsection 1 or 2 of this section commits an offense and is liable on conviction to a fine not exceeding 50,000 naira or imprisonment for a term of five years or to both such fine and imprisonment. <laughs> Did you guys know this? <laughs> All of you that have other eight children in your home, did you guys know this? I didn't know this. I didn't know that they have actually, and I was just talking about legis um, legalizing it and, um, you know, creating regulation. Based. But the law is clear, it's very clear that any person under the 18 should not be employed as domestic help outside his own home. Chicken now. So, it means that what we are now doing is not how to implement this legislation into our daily lives. Because what is happening, a lot of people are employing people that, children that are young, they are going through a lot of things that have lost so much. There's also the aspect of human trafficking, okay? You find kids that, where's your mom leads, where's your dad leads, and you don't even know who to trace, you don't know who to, where to call, you don't know what to do. Who is this ambiguous agent that you collect, that collects money for every child that they bring to your home or every person that they bring to your home? It's crazy what kind of informal industry has been cultivated in this regard and we must do something we must absolutely absolutely do something to make sure that we are erring on the side of caution we are doing things legally and these kinds of scenarios don't repeat themselves because truly really, truly speaking a lot of people are and employ psychopaths in their homes they are employing which is a wizard <laughs> they are employing people that are jealous and envious of them they are employing criminals criminals i had one who was a pathological liar like she would lie to everybody nobody knew where she was whenever i always i often check phones because security reasons you don't know what these children are saying you don't know what these young people you don't know what these people are saying so i'll often just once in a while like when it, the spirit leads i will just take bring let me see what you're saying surely those who are unable to relieve their phone unable to um like leave their phone they're always obsessed with their phone i there was one time i found out how this person was literally texting at every moment oh we just came back from the party oh we just did this we just did that your whole like life is outside and you have no idea I even once talk, did a video talking about the fact that every staff that has your number, surely on WhatsApp should be blocked off all your social media because you don't know who they are texting, what they are planning against you, what they are doing. So please, in as much as I understand the need for support and good help and good domestic staff, one, please ensure that the person is over the age of 18. Two, do your due diligence and not just, oh, check, 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 do tests. Test is important, but also do psychological tests if possible because you don't know the kind of good in your house and be vigilant, okay? If you can afford it, cameras, or periodical checks, your gates marked because people are, hmm, so them have gotten pregnant for your security guard. Some of them are out. One even told me, oh, this man, this security man was toasting me. Anytime you see me, say, hello, I look so beautiful. It can come off as innocent, but you never know where these other men are taking it to. People can be conniving, kidnap, kidnap that happens in town, in these areas. It's not people that don't know you. It's people that have tracked your movement and monitoring. I know that you'll be at a certain place at a certain It's hardly possible. It's, it's almost impossible that kidnap is random. It's very planned. It's very thought out. They know that at 9 o'clock every time this woman comes back from church, at this time she does this, at this time she... That is why when I used to vlog, I hardly ever put the timestamp on any of my vlogs. I hardly ever do it. Yes, you might know the location by seeing the places and everything, but you will never know when and the day, unless I say the day, but you hardly ever know because you don't know who is conniving with who, who is planning with who, so we have to be extremely vigilant, you guys. I'm so sorry that this thing happened to Dr. Fum Layo. It really broke my heart, but um, it's a cautionary tale for all of us to learn from. Please, 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 let us be careful. Let us be cautious. Let us be security conscious, even with food, even with the type of people. I know somebody that, uh, a, a story, where I think it was on social media, we talk about a young girl like spoiling spit and using nonsense to brush the children's mouth and things like that and horrible 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 stories and i know that it's not only domestic staff that are have done horrible things. I know that employers are the same too. So we have to just be better as a society and be extremely conscious. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you realize that hmm, 
He came, no, the, the law, the law has spoken. And if you are charged, you are charged. You've seen your friends, five years imprisonment or 50, 50K fine or more. And you know that when it's even domesticated in a state, they can even change it and increase what they want to say. So they can increase the punishment. They can increase the fine. So yeah, let's be guided, okay? I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, okay? Leave a comment and your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you guys later. Bye.